Hi guys, we reached that part in our study which is quite a landmark, landmark section in foreign analysis which is talking about the convergence of the Fourier series. In my previous example, I've shown you that the function, when we pick a value of x, put it inside the function, and pick a value of x, put it inside the Fourier series, they may not agree, which certainly may be the case. And also, previous examples, we have also encountered discontinuous functions, functions which are broken and at certain points the derivative does not exist. Uh, does the Fourier series converge or does the Fourier series converge to the function at that point? We need a way to investigate where does the Fourier series converge to and that is our lesson today. Before we start, we need to go back into a chapter of calculus and talk about piecewise continuous functions. Let's just say that f is piecewise continuous on a to b. Okay, let's just say it's piecewise continuous from a to b. If f is piecewise continuous from a to b, it needs to satisfy three conditions. Condition number one, limit as x approaches a from the positive side of fx and the limit as x approaches uh, b from the, uh, from the negative side, which is actually from the left side, fx um, are finite. This is condition number one, that they are finite. Or basically we are looking at the limits at the extreme ends of the graph. Condition number two is that f is continuous at all but possibly a finite amount of points. A finite amount of points. This, this finite amount of points is just basically stressing the term piecewise continuous. It's not continuous, it's piecewise continuous because there are certain points where the, the graph is discon discontinuous. So that's why we've got finite over there. And number three, at points which are discontinuous, at points which are discontinuous, the left and right limits must exist. Left and right limits, limits must exist. They must exist and I believe must be finite, the left and right limits. So what are the left and right limits? Well, I'm going to define them to you right now. The right limit, which we will denote as um, the certain point x0 and is plus, okay, uh, right limit, so we're approaching the limit from the right side, that's why you got a plus sign over there, is equals to the limit of h tends towards uh, 0 from the positive side of function x0 plus with h. Okay, that is the definition of the right limit and the left limit is given by, so this is the right limit, okay, and the left limit is given by the function of x0 approach, approach from the left hand side is equals to the limit of x, uh, the limit as h tends towards 0 from the positive side of function x not take away h. Okay, these are basically definitions that you can look up in a certain calculus books of limits. Okay, and on top of that, we need another definition, and that is the left and right derivative. Okay, it's going to be quite long, but I'm just going to write it anyway. So, if we have the right derivative, how we write is that the, the function, uh, you know, the dash, which is the first derivative, but we put an r over here, displaying that it's the right derivative, is x not, which is equal to the limit as h tends towards uh, 0 plus of function f uh, not plus h take away function x not divided by h okay this is for the right derivative and for the left derivative is basically left and it's just similar to that however this is when h tends towards zero from the negative side of function x not plus h but this time we'll have to minus uh, x uh, function x not um, minus from here like this okay uh, sorry I think there's a plus over here yeah okay so basically this is our definitions of the left and right limit and of the left and, uh, right and left derivatives um, if I were to illustrate that on a graph basically to get a feel of things this is what uh, we mean over here okay so let's just draw a graph shall we okay and why is this important well basically because Functions that we deal with for analysis, most of them will be piecewise continuous. I've just shown you. For example, like uh, you know, you would normally see graphs like and show more future graphs in electronic circuits, such as maybe something that goes like that. Now it's not uncommon to find a graph like that. I could, I it could be something like I don't know DC current that you know it goes over here, but when it reaches a certain limit, the current drops. So this is definitely piecewise continuous. This really enforces or builds up a reason why we need to look at a piecewise continuous uh, curve, which is also why I'm spending a lot of time doing this because we want to get these definitions correct. So let's just have a graphical representation of what this whole thing means. 
uh, taking Q from that graph, let's just say I've got another graph like here, which is uh, piecewise continuous. So at this certain point x naught, the, the graph goes something like that. All right. So x naught is is um, like this, but it's discontinuous because really there is no derivative at that point over there. However, what we can say is that at x naught. X0 is a point which is discontinuous. There is no derivative. There's no proper derivative. However, there is the right limit. Well, right is the right limit. The right limit is as we approach X0 from the positive side. So we're going over here, and the right limit just simply gives us this point over here. But if you were to substitute the values inside there, which you know you would do in a course in calculus, I will not do it, but basically that's what you get over there. Um, if I were to approach it from the left side, so basically the left limit, which is going from this side over here, the value of x0 is basically the one over here. Not the, val not the value of x0, but sorry, the, the, the left limit of the function of x as we approach x0 is going to be equal to that value over there. So that is the left and right limit. However, what about the left and right derivative? Um, a way to think about it is very easy. The right derivative is that consider the right hand side of the graph and what is the gradient at that point. So, this point is discontinuous, is discontinuous, discontinuous at this point. Um, for the right derivative, we'll consider the right side of the graph and calculate the gradient at that point. Well, that's very obvious because the gradient is basically like this over here. So if we were to do the proper calculations, this is the gradient that we would get. What is the left-hand side derivative? Consider the left-hand side of the graph and find the gradient, which is basically this thing over here. Okay, this, as you can see, is basically an interpretation of this over there. Um, x plus h, and then you subtract an x, uh, oh, sorry, um, function of x plus h, subtract a function of x not minus, which is basically a small function over here, to get the, the gradient. So basically this is what it means. Now there is no clear derivative at that point, I stress again because it's discontinuous, but the left derivatives exist, the right derivatives exist, the, the left and right limits exist of the certain function at x naught. Okay, so this is really just a lesson of piecewise continuous curve. Well, if f is piecewise continuous, sorry, piecewise continuous function from a to b, uh, this is again. Now, why is this important? Because I say again, because in certain graphs in forward analysis, we are dealing with something like this. It increases and then it goes straight. A function like this may need to be defined as equals to, let's just say this would be x from minus 2 to um, x minus 2 to 0, and then this would be 2 from 0 to 1, and this could be 0 from 1 to x2. Uh, so you see, points are discontinuous. There are three functions. We need to get this definition straight, okay? So basically, uh, let's just look at, if s and p is continuous, get these terms right. Left and right side limit, the right side limit, uh, left and right derivative. So in order to create a ground for the convergence of a forest series, which is coming up right now.